Hey, how's it going? I'm Nick Aska, and welcome back to I Could Do That DIY for another custom doll video. It's a romantic day in the studio today, and we're also getting a little weird. So let's mix up a couple dolls. Alright, let's get into it. Step 1. Doll prep and planning. So for today's project, we're using a yellow Creative Monster base body. Not this one exactly, I actually already started but lost some footage. Previously, I actually cracked the face open by putting an all in the top hole right here, and then working your way around the edge and popping it off. We're going to be using just the base of the head. I also did a little bit of sculpting and pre-sanded the body off screen. Here's what that looks like. We're also going to be using the Creative Monster Harpy Legs. Like I said, I did some sculpting earlier by adding some scales to the leg. We'll be adding them all over the body. I won't need the front face plate, but I'll put it in my stock box for later. We'll also be mashing up this body with this awesome T-Rex toy. Oh my god, yes! It's going to be so much fun. We're going to chop off its head and some other parts too. Alright, let's get into sculpting. Step 2. Sculpting. So I'm just going to jump into adding some more scales to the body. I have some leftover epoxy sculpt from working on my Makoto Takahashi doll stand. So I'm just rolling little circles and just squishing them onto the body so that they look like scales. Now taking a bigger piece of epoxy sculpt, I'm going to add some texture to the front of the body. We're not going to add too much, just a thin layer. Make sure to wear gloves when you're doing this because the epoxy sculpt is toxic. I'm just shaping it a little bit and smoothing it out with water as I go. Now let's add some texture so it blends out the T-Rex body parts that we're going to add later on. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Now let's go back to adding scales. I'm going to add scales all over the rest of the body, as well as over where I already sculpted, just to blend it in a little bit more. Cool, this is looking really great, but before I get carried away, let's go harvest some body parts. So I'm going to grab my Dremel and cut away the parts that I want. Today we're collecting the head, the hands, and the tail. I wanted to start with the head, but then realized the hands were going to get into the way. So I went ahead and cut those off, and went back to the head. After a little bit, my Dremel battery decided to die on me, so to finish off the cutting, I used some wire cutters. While the Dremel's charging, we're going to work on this head a little bit. Let's connect it back to the Creative Monster head. It's not a bad fit, but this bottom jaw is going to get into the way, so we're going to have to cut it off. Can I do it with these pliers? Mm, I don't think so. I think we're going to have to use the Dremel. I'm just going to line up my heads and then mark off where I need to cut off with the permanent marker. But the Dremel is still charging, so let's work on these hands a little bit. Using an X-Acto knife, I'm going to cut out little notches in the hand. This is going to be for the wrist joint later on. I'm going to fish out that little chunk with my wire cutters. Alright, now let's harvest the wrist joint from the monster high hands. 
Using my X-Acto knife, I'm just going to cut one side and just pull off the hand. Alright, here they are. Now let's see if these fit. I have a little bit more cutting to do, but once they fit, I'm just going to secure it into place with some wire. I'm just going to heat up the wire with a lighter, and then shove it through the two pieces. I'm going to wiggle it around a little bit and make sure it fits okay. Then I'm just going to trim it to length. Then I'm going to secure the wire into place with some super glue. I'm just going to set those aside to dry, and I think the Dremel's been charging long enough. So let's go back to working on the face. Let's just cut this lower jaw off, and then glue this head to the T-Rex head. Yeah, that's looking great. Now let's add some super glue. Cool, let's just set that aside to dry. After it's all dry, I'm going to cut the sides of the head because it doesn't look quite right. We're just going to trim it so it looks a little bit better with the T-Rex head. After that, we're going to cut off the tail. Now let's see how this tail fits. Let's just refine the shape a little bit, then we're going to add a wire to the tail part and then drill a hole into the main body, add some glue, and then secure it into place. I'm just going to mark my position for my tail with a permanent marker before drilling. I patched up the holes in the head with some tin foil and some super glue off screen. I think it'd be a really fun idea to add some magnets to the head for some future accessories later on. I'm just going to secure them into place with some super glue, and then sculpt over them later on. Alright, while that dries, let's go back to sculpting. Let's start by blending the tail back into the body. We'll also be adding some texture so it looks more seamless. And of course, we're adding more scales. Also, I do have to say that this hobby is more meant for adults or people with adult supervision. A lot of the materials you use are dangerous or hazardous to your health and require protective gear. These art dolls are meant for collecting and display and not for play. Let's have a little sculpting ADD and work on the head a little bit. Let's cover up these magnets and start blending the two heads together. We're going to add a nice ridge to the back of the head to blend the two pieces together. And we'll also cover up the top magnet. Now I'm using a piece of crumpled up tin foil to add texture to the head. This will really make the two pieces look seamless. But before I get too carried away, let's make this a little bit more symmetrical. Let's start working on the other side. I'm just going to bulk it out to match the other side and start working on the back as well. Let's cover up all the plastic with some sculpting. Like I said, I'm really focusing on the ridges of the head. This will really create a nice dimension and really blend it into the front piece. Let's add a little bit more texture with my palette knife. We're just going to create some ridges on the back of the head. And of course, some more texture with my tin foil. I'm just going to let this cure a little bit overnight and then come back and do the rest. Now let's start working on blending in the bottom of the head.
We're going to also add some more scales to the head to blend it into the body. I think the different sizes and scale makes it a little bit more cartoony and less serious. By the way, what is this original paint job? Why is his tongue green? Obviously the dinosaur is clearly sick, she needed help, and we're here to do it. Cool, the head's all done. Let's just set that aside to dry. Now let's go back to the tail. Let's just add some scales to blend it in. Let's just finish off by adding scales all over the body. After I'm all done, I'm going to set it aside for 24 hours to cure. Then it's on to the next step. Step 3. Repaint. So here she is in all of her glory. I'm just going to do a base coat of brown Tamiya color spray paint. Then I'm going to seal it off with a layer of Mr. Super Clear, and then dry brush on various shades of green acrylic paint to create dimension. I'm going to start off with my darkest green tone and get lighter from there. After a good base of the dark green, let's move on to the next tone up. We're going to do a total of three tones. We have the dark green, a mid-tone green, and then a yellow green at the end. And depending on how you dry brush it on, you can really contour and define the face. So we're going to start by highlighting the front of the chest. Then I'm going to focus in on the key points of the face, like the brow bone, the nose, the cheekbones, and the jaw. I'm also going to highlight underneath of the tail, the knees, and the leg glutes. I think they're called glutes. It's a lizard, I guess T-Rex, dinosaur thing. I think they're called glutes. And let's not forget about the hands. Now let's move on to the next tone up. We're just going to continue to lightly build up our highlight. The body paint's looking pretty good. Now let's work on the mouth. We're going to base out the inside of the mouth with the pink acrylic paint. I'm 
I'm going to gradually add in some red acrylic paint to create some dimension. I'm going to set that aside to dry. Once it's all dry, I'm going to create some more dimension with my pastels. I'm going to take my red and black pastels and really deepen up the inside of the mouth. I'm going to use my black pastel to help contour the mouth and the body. Let's really sink in those eye sockets in the back of the mouth. Now I'm going to add some blush to the cheeks with the pink pastel. After that, I'm going to seal it with a layer of Mr. Super Clear and then we're going to add some more acrylic paint to the face. Let's start by coloring in the eyes yellow. Then we're going to move on to coloring the teeth white. We are going to keep them really optic white. She got her teeth whitened for her wedding. Now let's add in that vertical slash pupil. I'm going to be using a very tiny brush and some black paint. And while I have the black paint out, let's do the fingernails and the toenails. Alright cool, now let's add some catch lights to the eyes with some white. To finish the repaint off, we're going to gloss the inside of the mouth. We're going to take my medium polymer gloss and just paint it on the inside. We're also going to be doing the eyes. Step 4. Clothing. Alright, today I'm going to actually show you my dressmaking process because a few of you asked for it. So let's just grab our muslin and start draping a dress. Here's the dress we're going to be draping. It has a mesh overlay and an embroidered cotton base. It's a tube dress with some adornment. We're going to be embellishing with pearls. Alright, let's get started draping. We're going to get started by marking out our center front on our muslin. This is going to be our reference point while draping and it helps keep us straight and on grain. I'm just going to cut this piece a little bit smaller. Alright, let's also take off this head to make it easier to drape on. Cool. Now I'm just going to give this a rough pinning. I don't mean physically rough, I mean more of like a general pinning. We'll come back and refine it later. I'm going to mark my center back and start cutting off the excess so I can drape around the tail. Marking my center back opening as I go. Then I'm going to add a couple slashes just to help fit it around the tail. And then pin below the tail.
then I'm going to trim the hem length. I'm thinking slightly below the knee. Cool, that looks pretty good. Let's just refine this a little bit and fully mark out our center back. All right, let's just complete the center back line. Let's just mark out the top and bottom hem. All right, now let's transfer this to paper. Let's just draw our center front line on our paper. Now let's continue to trace out the line. I like to flip the fabric over so I can transfer the pencil marks. I'm only going to do one side. I'm just going to dot my general reference points and then trace it out. Let's mark out where our center back is going to open and trace out our quarter inch seam allowance. Then we're just going to fold it in half, and then cut it out. Awesome, I'm just going to complete the seam allowance off screen. Alright, now let's fully label our pattern. We're going to label the center front, the center back, and the tail opening. Now let's cut some fabric. I'm going to lay out the hem parallel to the selvage edge of the fabric. Okay, let's just place our pattern, then trace out with a pencil. After that, I'm just going to cut it out. After that, I'm going to cut out the lining piece. We're going to slightly offset the pattern because it's slightly sheer and I want the pattern to look really rich. Alright, now let's sew the two pieces together. I'm going to do a quarter inch stitch all the way around, leaving an opening at the bottom so I can turn it inside out. off my corner excess, but not too close, and do a couple notches in the curved areas. And then I'm just going to flip it inside out. After that, I'm going to press it off screen. After that, I'm going to press it with an iron off screen. Then I'm going to do 8 inch chop stitch all the way around. This also closes up the opening that we left earlier. And now I'll complete the dress base. Now we'll move on to embellishing the dress with some pearl beads. Let's just find a good starting point. Here looks good. I've doubled up my thread. Now let's get started. And while I do that, I just have to say thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on all of our latest projects. Leaving a comment and a like really helps the channel and helps the video get out to more people. Also, check us out on Instagram and give us a follow at icouldothat.diy and at kawaii dollies. The kawaii dollies Instagram is a little bit more doll focused and is actually older than my channel, so you can check out all of my past work. Ooh, it looks so pretty. Alright, now let's put the dress on the body. We're going to course up the back with some embroidery floss. I'm going to put a needle on both sides of the floss and start at the bottom and work my way up. Then I'm going to tie it into a bow, measure it to length, and then cut it. Then I'm going to add some Elmer's glue all to the end of each tip off screen. Then I'm going to repeat the same process for the top half. Now let's move on to adding the mesh. I cut a 3 inch panel of mesh off screen. I'm doing a gathering stitch to cinch it together. 
which I'm not sure was entirely necessary because I ended up just doing a loop later on. Alright, now let's just tack it into place. We're going to do a couple stitches to secure it. Then we're going to do a knot to finish it off. It's going to drape across the bust so it looks something like this. Now let's repeat the same thing on the other side off screen. Ooh, that looks so pretty. Now we're going to drape it around the arm. As you can see, I'm just looping around to cinch. It worked just as great. Now let's just tack into place. And repeat the same thing on the other side off screen. So here it is so far, it looks really pretty. But I think it needs a little bit more volume in the back. So let's add some additional strips of mesh. They're going to get gradually smaller as they go up. Let's just loop it around a cinch. And tack in the place. And while we have the thread in on that side, we'll do the next one up, and then we'll knot. Cool, that looks really good. Again, let's do the other side off screen. So it's looking really good so far, oh my god! Let's add a few more pearls right here where we tacked down at the arm. Alright, that's looking really good. Now let's do the other side off screen. And that completes the dress. Step 5. Accessories. So these are the shoes we're going to be using today. I believe they're an Ever After High Apple White shoe. We'll be spray painting them today with a white Tommy and Color spray paint. I have to do a few coats to reach the opacity that I need. Then I do a finishing layer of Mr. Super Clear. After that's all dry, we're going to be cutting the gem in a glitter glue as I pearlize white glitter. After I do both sides, I'm going to move on to the veil. I cut a little oval out of warbler. Then I cover the head in plastic wrap to protect it. Then I heat up the warbler with my heat gun, and then put it on the head to shape it. After it cools, I'm going to glue a magnet to it with some super glue. Once the glue is dry, I'm going to cut it down a little bit. Then I'm going to paint it white with some acrylic paint. After the paint dries, we're going to work on the mesh part of the veil. I cut an 8 inch wide strip of mesh. I'm just going to gather it up 7 inches away from the tip. After I gather it up, I'm just going to knot it to secure it. After that, we're going to glue it to the base. Once the super glue is dry, we're going to add some pearls. We're also going to super glue those on. Cool, looks really great. Let's just add some more pearls off screen. Then the veil's complete. Now let's give her a ring. Using a bead and some wire, I'm going to make a ring. Let's just put the wire through the bead, and then wrap it around the finger. Then I'm going to use my needle nose pliers to bend it and shape it. After that, I'm just going to cut it with my wire cutters, and then bend it a little bit more, and there you go, you have your ring. Now let's work on the bouquet. Using some paper roses, I'm going to make a little mini bouquet. 
We're going to start by wrapping two paper roses together and then combining those into four. Then I'm going to add some fake baby's breath to the center by super gluing it. The wire isn't quite long enough for a handle, so we're just going to glue some stem bits from the baby's breath to the base. Once the super glue is dry, we're going to wrap that in lace. Once that is dry, we're going to wrap that in white embroidery floss. Once again, just gluing it to secure it. Then just cutting off the excess. After that, we're going to make a little wire handle. We're just going to stick it in and bend it to shape. After we're happy with the shape, we're just going to glue it to secure it. Let's just give this a little test fit. Awesome, it looks great! Once the glue is dry, we're going to paint it white so it blends in off screen. Then, everything's complete. There's only one more thing to do. Step 6. Doll photo shoot. So here she is. Here's the final result. I'm so happy with her. I think she looks amazing. I really love the contrast between hard and soft, and I think the end product looks amazing. Her name is Teresa Rex, Bridezilla. So for those of you who wanted to see it, I showed my process of making a dress. The whole process didn't take too long for this look because it's only one garment. When there's more garments, obviously it takes longer. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you like to see more of my sewing process? Also, do you like these monster mashups? I love them so much. I think they're super funny. For the rest of the video, just enjoy our beauty, elegance, and grace. And of course, the rest of the photos. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!